Hi, I'm Tom Burgess, and thank you for listening to The Real Agenda, the podcast of political change. Today we're talking to Chris Turner. Now, Chris is the executive director of B-Lab UK. And B-Lab UK is a UK-registered charity which exists to support a community of UK-based certified B corporations. Now, to achieve certification, businesses have to meet the highest standard of social and environmental performance, public transparency and legal accountability to balance profit and purpose. The B Corporation community seeks to move towards reducing inequality, lower levels of poverty, a healthier environment, stronger communities and the creation of more quality jobs with dignity and purpose. So this episode is the first in our new series, Profit for Purpose. Each episode in this series will include interviews with business leaders, experts, academics and media about how we can redefine success in business and build a more inclusive and sustainable economy and at the same time make a positive impact on reducing inequality. So I started by asking Chris what he thought was wrong with capitalism in the UK. Our perspective is that the essentially the, the systemic problem the, with, with capitalism in the UK is really the, this notion of shareholder primacy. So it's this sort of what actually is a fairly recent phenomenon, Milton Friedman's sort of concept of shareholder primacy, which has really become the norm, very much become the orthodoxy. And it's kind of what people um, assume when they think about the role of business is to generate profit and to maximise value for shareholders. This fundamental notion kind of sits at the heart of um, the way in which we organise our economy. So we argue that actually that's the problem because it essentially drives profit maximisation above all other priorities and considerations and that actually what businesses should do and what they need to do is to consider other stakeholders alongside their shareholders so they need to consider the impact that they have on community and society and the people that interact with the business um, their employees um, and also to consider the impact that that business has on the environment of course and on the planet and so those three components shareholders society and the environment they become the the triple bottom line you know they become the three areas within which a business needs to consider its its impact on the world sort of holistically and how will you measure these other ways well one of the things that we i suppose developed as as b lab so one of the core things we do is offer a an assessment tool it, it's a good question because it's a really hard thing to do you know the one of the appeals of measuring your success against a single bottom line is that it's a number and it's very clear and it's an easy metric to um, to refer to and to track. Whereas obviously to track your impact across a whole range of different, you know, your, all your externalities and, and to track your impact across a whole range of different metrics is a big job. And it requires a lot of thought and time and resource for, for a business to do that. And so we provide our what we call our B impact assessment, which the intent there is for it to be a sort of one stop shop a business can complete their assessment and they get a score and they can see how they're performing against the average business in terms of how they treat their workers their impact on the environment their impact on community so across five different big areas the b impact assessment will allow a business to easily see its performance across those different areas and also to identify areas where they can make quick improvements and, and up their score in particular areas. So what, what sort of example, you know, say like impact on community, what sort of things do they have to do? There are examples, well, examples in, in, in each section. So to give you a few, in um, workers, you know, there'll be questions about um, pay equity. So what's the difference between the highest paid and the lowest paid in the business? Um, in environment, there'll be questions about, for example, your energy supplier. Do you get your energy from renewable sources? The reason, one of the reasons why it's a good question is because it's obviously gets very complicated when you consider um, developing a tool, which we have, that works for every business, every potential business that could come along and want to use the tool. So the questions that you need to ask, for example, to a business that has a long and complicated supply chain about where they source their materials from and how they whether they pay um, appropriately for the goods that they source and to, to growers or farmers, for example, and the environmental impacts of their supply chain. Those questions are going to be very different to the questions that you might ask to a small consultancy business, for example, which is a few people providing, providing a service, which doesn't have a supply chain. 
what happens is you're completing our assessment is you're you're sort of gated down different paths depending on which questions are relevant to your business and so those supply chain questions won't be given to a smaller business without a supply chain and then the questions are also weighted so you know a company with many many employees big employer more weighting will be given to their questions about how they treat their people and benefits and all that sort of stuff is there great great interest now in big corporations or being a better business well, it's clear from public dialogue, I think, that many of the issues which we believe businesses should be helping to tackle, such as climate change, such as inequality, are becoming increasingly prominent in public discourse. You know, they're issues that people are care, you know, care about and they're issues that people are, in the case of climate, with protests and things, they're issues that people are taking action and making, you know, meaningful contributions to, to, to change. So... We're seeing that groundswell, I suppose, of kind of public demand for solutions. And what we're seeing in response to that and in response to a lot of things is we're seeing businesses, more and more businesses coming to us and saying, you know, what's this B Corp thing all all about? You know, how would it work for my business? How do we certify? And that's striking. But what's equally striking, I think, is the increasing number of bigger businesses that are coming to us, you know, big multinationals, you know, big household brands, you know, companies that I think appreciate the fact that for them to certify it's going to be a big job because they're the oil tank, you know, the proverbial oil tanker that has to sort of turn around. But yet still they realise that this is a journey they need to embark on. You know, they need to start making these changes. And I think that's where I suppose B Corp is powerful, both in terms of the, not the final destination, but in terms of the achievement that they want to prove their commitment, but also in terms of the tool that can get them there with the assessment. So they can sort of immediately start diving in and sort of seeing how to reorient their business towards having a positive impact. And then they can kind of see the reward at the end of it in becoming a B Corporation, being part of the community, getting the recognition that they deserve for having a positive impact. So there's no sort of official recognition of B corporations then? I mean, it's completely independent and it's completely and doesn't independent. have any effect connection with government or tax advantages or anything? No, no, absolutely not. The only component of it which is sort of related to governance is the need, so the requirement for every B Corp to make a legal change. So in the UK, every B Corp needs to make a change to their articles of association. So to enshrine essentially that triple bottom line, people, planet and profit, within their articles and to say that they will give, give equal consideration to those three stakeholders um, when directors are making their decisions. And so that legal change and a, a pass score on the assessment are the two criteria that a B Corp needs to satisfy in order to certify. So what's the relationship with, between you as B Labs mm. and the companies that are B corporations? We as B Lab are a charity. So we're an independent charity which is responsible for growing the movement here in the UK. So for getting more and more B Corps um, certified and, and as part of our community and our movement. B Corps themselves can't be charities, they have to be businesses. As we've discussed, this is our sort of our whole theory of change is about how can we reorient business around around being a force for good. Our role as B-Lab really is in raising awareness of the movement, communicating our theory of change, and then helping businesses through this process, quite in- involved process of being certified. And then once they are, our role as B-Lab is also to cultivate the community. So, you know, make sure that the community of B Corps that we have in the UK, which is now about 215 businesses in the UK, are all, all experience the value of being part of a community that believe in the same way of doing business. So we run events um, where they can all come along and network and be part of that that community and facilitate connections between them. We run learn to be events, which are kind of subject matter led events where they can learn all about about, um, diversity and inclusion, or it might be about supply chain, but whatever it is, it's sort of, it's led by that content and sharing best practice. We do a big annual event, which is taking place in October, and and we also share a lot of content on best practice as a sort of uh, an online hub for B Corps as well. So a lot of our time as B Lab is spent on that kind of cultivation of the community and those those connections and making sure that our B Corps um, feel very tangible benefits as well as the kind of mission benefits. So what's the relationship between other sort of accreditation organisations like 
Living Wage Foundation yeah. or Fair Tax Mark. I yeah. mean, how they, they are, they're sort of single issue, but you're or lots of issues, so to speak. Is that yeah, exactly. I think you're exactly right. Yeah, I mean, the the I think they're very complementary. We we hugely value you know those those um, certifications and awards. I think the our perspective is that yes, B Corp is the sort of the kind of holistic certification. So it doesn't sit at product level. It sits at you know whole business level and looks across the whole business. And so from that perspective, it's a little bit different. But I think the other kind of thing that sets B Corps apart is that they've also made this legal change. So they've, you know, they have passed an assessment and they've earned the certification from that perspective. But it's really the coupling of that with the legal change, which is a fundamental shift in the governance of a business, which is really the sort of the, the kind of systemic kind of change, if you like. It's a, it's a combination of those two, really, which I think it, it makes B Corp quite different to anything else which is out there. So a lot, a lot of the businesses that have become B corporations have found sort of several benefits from doing this. Yeah. Um, can you give us some examples of that where it's actually been better for business to be a B corporation or to act, be, act like one? We have a lot of stories, so uh, I can give some examples. We, we, we do a survey every year of our B corps, and this year, um, 99% of B corps sort of said we would recommend other businesses become B corps. So that's kind of the level of, you know, the level of um, benefit um, that B Corps feel. I, I think the, the range of benefits extends all the way from kind of the external sort of like, you know, this feeling that their B Corp certification is a, a validation, a kind of public external validation of their purpose and their positive impact, all the way through to very internal benefits. So we have lots of stories about B Corps who have Ellis Kitchen, for example, talk about, you know, they... Um, they get a lot of applicants for jobs who, are, who, who turn up and they're sort of like, well, I'm here, you know, I know about Ellers and I apply for this job because you're a B Corp. And, and we've, we've got examples like Havas London, the, the advertising agency, who have retained employees because they're a B Corp. And employees have sort of said, I want to get more involved in B Corp, the B Corp stuff. And that's retained employees. So that kind of employee perspective, that angle is, is hugely valuable, obviously, to, to businesses and really powerful, both, um, both in terms of kind of tangible sense that employees have that they're contributing to a to positive impact but also i think in terms of pride you know working for a peak or working for a business that is a force for good so yeah lo- lots of examples around that we also another um, area where we've got great examples is where um, b corps have done business with other b corps so we got really nice examples of of, of kind of collaborations um, where we had a really nice example recently of um, Bulb Energy, the energy company. So they built a partnership with Climate Care where they ensured that all of the gas that Bulb was supplying was carbon neutral. So it's an amazing example of two B Corps coming together to do business and to deliver positive impact. And they wouldn't have felt, formed that partnership without both being part of the community. Because that's also another key thing now in business and indeed in the wider political world, it's trust yeah. and loss of trust. So are we finding that more trust between B corporations? I think that's right. Yeah, I mean, I think the and and that extends both. You know, that's obviously you know business to business. You know, the trust is there. You know, you know, you know that every other B corp has gone through that same assessment that you have, and that it's you know very robust and and credible. But I think that it also extends to customers, citizens. They they know that they can trust the B corp certification because of its uh, because of its credibility so yes i think that's i think that's absolutely right and we're you know we're working hard to sort of tell the story of the the certification in in such a way that we're, we're always kind of talking about you know this is a big decision for a business you know they're changing their governance and they're investing a lot in going through the assessment so i was sort of communicating all of the work that goes into becoming a b corp i think fuels that you know the trust i think it's a really important component yeah so what can we the people do to sort of bring about a better system of business then? Really finding those businesses that, that, that mean it. And obviously, you know, B corporations are, you know, that's a, a big group of those businesses. So of course, there are other businesses as well out there as well who are doing business in the right way and meaning it. So I think it's a case of whether you use the B Corp shortcut to, to track those down or, or, or whether it's working with buying from, you know, business in your local community or whatever it may be. There are lots of other models, cooperative, you know, cooperatives, employee owned businesses, things like that, who are who are doing great things. So I think it's finding those businesses and then I think it's buying from them. I think it's if you're in business, I think it's doing business with them. 
Um, and of course, it's working for them as well. They're the ways in which, by voting with your feet, demanding that your employer is behaving in this way and doing business in the, in the right way, as well as spending your money with, you know, with, with businesses that are operating in the right way. All, that's all hugely powerful. And then I think the final thing, which is also incredibly powerful and something we're working hard on, is sort of sharing that making this case to your friends and your family and you know people that people that you know because i think it's it's more obvious perhaps to kind of demand political response to problems some somehow give business an exemption you know because you sort of think of them you know think of that as a transactional relationship but actually you're in a, every citizen is in a great position to make demands of business and should do so one of the big concerns today which government doesn't seem to be focusing on is the high levels of inequality Mm. and the fact that there's 14 million people in poverty. Can you just summarise how you think the whole B Corporation and being a better business can contribute to reducing poverty inequality? There's two obvious ways that B Corps can contribute to, to that. And I think first of which is being a responsible corporate citizen, paying taxes and being a good actor in, in our system and in the economy. So I think that, first of all, I think that's a really key way that businesses need to live up to their responsibilities. And then I think the second obvious way is is how they treat their people. If you're in employment, then you should expect to be paid a, you know, a living wage. That's again a responsibility that businesses need to live up to, the way that they treat their people. And of course it's not just the wage, it's also the, you know, the benefits and and all those things and all of those things are part of the part of our assessment. So we ask businesses in a lot of detail how they treat their people and we ask businesses in a lot of detail about their their, their governance and them living up to those responsibilities as well. How do you ensure that the companies that come into can be corporations that they actually continue and follow things through once they become certified? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a good question. So every B corporation needs to recertify every three years. So there's a certification term once they've passed the assessment and of course made the legal change. They're then certified for three years, and at the end of that three year period, they have to go through the assessment again to renew their certification for another three years. What will also happen in those three years is we will release a new version of our standards. So the assessment itself is updated every three years as well. And obviously those standards, you know, as general expectations rise, those standards become more stringent as well. So the certification is getting more difficult every three years. And so businesses need to up their game to to maintain that certification. And of course, the other way in which businesses are incentivized to improve year on year is that as they've certified to become a B Corp, they've begun using our assessment. So they've actually begun using a really powerful and useful tool for measuring their impact. And so there's a kind of inbuilt incentive there to continue using the tool. And so they can see their progress year on year and track that improvement throughout their certification period. So there's a kind of behavioural incentive there, as well as the certification requirement to recertify. OK, well, thanks very much, Chris. That's most interesting. I do wish you success in bringing more businesses into the B Corporation fold and, then, and these businesses making a greater contribution to the good of society for all, rather than just the few that accumulate the wealth. Absolutely. That's a pleasure. If you'd like to find out more about B Corporations, then go to bcorporation.uk. So we hope we've helped inform, involve and inspire you to take action. So what do you think? Do email us at info at realagenda.org or contact us via our website, realagenda.org. And if you'd like to help with The Real Agenda, we'd love to hear from you. If you enjoy our shows, tell your friends and also do give us a review with your podcast provider. So what's up next on The Real Agenda? We'll be talking about bringing our voting system up to date and talking to Make Votes Matter. And next up in the Profit for Purpose series will be Paul Lindley, founder of Ella's Kitchen, the organic baby food company. And of course, there's a weekly wake up, which goes out every Friday and sets the alarm off on what's really happening in our country. So do stay listening to The Real Agenda. Thank you very much for that. A special thanks also to our sponsors, Reverse Media Group, one of the fastest growing search and media companies. Find out why at reversemediagroup.com. So one thing is certain, people want to see change to a more compassionate and just society, as well as more courageous politicians prepared to do the right thing for people over party. It's urgent, and it's up to us to make it happen. That's the real agenda. 
I'm Tom Burgess. Thank you for listening and I look forward to talking to you again soon.